colonies were <coughs> we were angry, things were going. We were no longer British. We were Americans. We had had so many generations here. We did not associate ourselves with Britain anymore anyway. And so then it was on the 23rd of March, 1775, that Patrick Henry rose at the House of Burgess to make one of his most famous speeches. And at this point, I shall need some assistance. Patrick Henry was a wild and passionate individual, 15 years older than I, a mesmerizing speaker, powerful, loud, obnoxious, self-important, but above all else, inspiring. He liked to dress in buckskin. He came to the House of Burgess wearing buckskin, woolen stockings, and an unpowdered wig. <laughs> He thought of himself a strong, reliant backwoodsman, which he wasn't really. Is there someone who is loud and obnoxious who would be willing to play the role of Patrick Henry for me? I need a volunteer. Step forward. Patrick Henry, would you come and read part of his lines? Yes. So here we are. There's your initial lines. We are in the House of Burgess, the 23rd of March, 1775, and, uh, let's record. Gentlemen, they cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. Why stand, why stand we here idle? What is that gentleman's, I'm sorry, what is it that the gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. And huzzah! And we have more, you and I. His speech shot like a lightning bolt through the colonies a month later on the 20th of April, one day after the battle of Lexington and Concord. Lord Dunmore, the royal uh, governor of Virginia, sent troops to take gunpowder from the armory in Williamsburg. 600 angry armed men gathered in Fredericksburg, threatening to march against the British. But after much heated discussion and debate, General Washington and the wiser heads concluded that it was not time for military action. Patrick Henry saw things differently. Would you return to your home uh, county of Hanover and speak to your Hanoverians? Men of Hanover, who will march with me against the British? See. And so they did. 150 men joined Henry as they marched 100 miles to Williamsburg. I was determined that if there was to be fighting, I should be there. And I and my brother Ambrose jumped on our horses and rushed down to join them, but we were too late. The Hanover militia approached the city. Henry demanded that Lord Dunmore return the powder. It is by British law that the government cannot confiscate any possessions without just compensation. I see no compensation. Lord Dunmore did not want to repeat of Lexington and Concord, and wrote a bill of exchange for 330 pounds. We have not the powder, but we have a victory. The governor has recognized our rights and our determination to protect them. He fears us. He shall not tread upon us again without consequences. And we do this actually in fours. Let us hear four huzzahs. Huzzah! 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 Remember, I was 23 years old, 5 foot 4, 100 pounds. I was enthusiastic and had no experience whatsoever in these things. <clears throat> Colonel Henry, Colonel Henry, 
James Madison Jr. of Montpelier, Orange County, we have come, written hard to stand with you. We had hoped to stand beside you in battle. And you may yet do exactly that. There will be war, and it shall not be long in coming. I can see strong determination in your face. I expect great freedom things from young Madison. I rode home with my heart fluttered. Patrick Henry, the greatest American ever, saw greatness in me. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Patrick. I think we have another.